Welcome back to Radical Repairs. Uh, today we have a Teddy Ruxpin. I uh, picked up Teddy Ruxpin on uh, Facebook Marketplace for a couple bucks, and uh, it seemed like it wasn't working because of corroded terminals, but who really knows? It's an animatronic bear. There's multiple things that could be wrong with this once we get the batteries in. Uh, so we're going to get some batteries in this, see if it's working, out, working correctly. Once we get it working correctly, uh, then we're going to take the next step to make him spooky. Um, the cool thing about this doll is that it's actually animatronic. Um, so it has a cassette player. I'll throw that in this camera over here so you can kind of see that. Uh, so essentially what this bear does is you put a tape in here, uh, you play the tape, and then there's actually movement in the mouth and in the eyes. Pick this up used on Marketplace. Um, and basically what was wrong with it, it seemed was that the battery terminals were corroded. I'll show you that now. Yeah, that came right out and you can see there, got some uh, corroded battery terminals. Not good. And this thing takes uh, four D batteries, which I had to pick up today and were shockingly expensive. Um, these terminals inside here, excuse me, actually look really good. So um, I have a feeling there's probably more going on with this than just some, some bad terminals. Uh, but we're going to dive in and we're going to take a look at it, see if we can get it running. Um, if we can get it working, then I have some really cool ideas for it. So I'm crossing my fingers that we can get this thing uh, up and running. I don't have a tape for it right now. I have one coming in the mail. Uh, so we actually can't test that part of it. I just want to see if it's getting power, if it's functioning, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so let's, uh, let's get into it. Let's throw some batteries in and see what happens. Right, let's see here. Does this not take D batteries? Come on, are you kidding me? Does this take C batteries? All right, well, I bought the wrong batteries. Fantastic. So these are D batteries. This must take C, which is okay. Uh, I guess you got Robotron back there. Robbie Jr. Robbie Jr. does take D batteries, I believe. Uh, we'll figure that out later. Um, so those weren't wasted. We'll figure out something for them. I will need to pick up some C batteries for this. Unfortunately, that means that right now I can't do any testing on it, which is okay. Um, what I actually want to do is get really good detailed pictures of the circuitry inside um, because I would like to make a spooky Ruxpin. So I need to get some detailed information on the board, uh, figure out you know what's going where so that I can interrupt the signal and make some cool stuff happen. Um, so let's go ahead and just dive into it anyways, uh, and what we'll do is get a good look inside and um, go from there. Yeah, I wish we could put batteries in it right now, but that'll be coming soon. All right, let's go ahead and get into this thing. Um, I see that there are uh, two screws here. Looks like there's two tiny screws deep inside of there. Uh, this is a double zero Phillips. I'm going to pull out, I think it would like a slightly larger screwdriver than this. Fortunately, I have uh, the business repair kit from iFixit, so I have more tools and I know what to do with, which is awesome. Forgot I had coffee. Mm. <sighs> Delicious. That's a double zero, Phillips one, there we go, that's perfect. So that should be a good size. I'm really loving this uh, business repair kit by iFixit. Um, I, I'm not worried about not having the right tools and that is really cool. Um, generally, I feel like I'm just mixing and matching a bunch of random tools and hoping I have the right thing, uh, but now I know I do. And if I don't, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> All right, let's get into this thing. Um, yeah, that should work. Perfect. Yep, that feels good in there. Doesn't feel like it's going to strip out. 
So I'm just going to remove these screws. I have done a little bit of digging online um, just to see kind of what's all involved inside here. And there's a lot of circuitry. There's actually a really cool web page um, where this dude just like took a bunch of pictures and put little explanations on it. It's just a web page full of these pictures with explanations. Looks like some sort of old Angel Fire website or something. It's, it's bizarre. Uh, but he has everything on there that you would need. That is uh, starting to turn in that screw a little bit. So we're going to get a smaller screwdriver. Um, not going to risk stripping that out. That is a little bigger than I was needing. So let's go back into our business repair toolkit here and let's get a double zero again. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And let's get back into it here. Let's see if that fits a little better. It doesn't. It does not fit better. I have another screwdriver here. A little better. Let's find a bit that's going to fit inside of here perfectly. Uh, I can tell that one's been hacked at. Uh, you can tell someone's been into this probably with some of the, the damage that we see here. Uh, that could just be from normal wear and tear, but that screw seems like it may have been uh, unscrewed with the improper screwdriver. So let's find something that bites a little better to be safer. Um, ah, there we go. That one looks perfect. Nope. It's not perfect. Just keep trying here. Mm, still not perfect. I think I might go with one of these. Looks like to be a little shorter on the blades. Mm -mm. Man, I'm starting to worry about this one. Really don't want to have to be drilling screws out already. Yeah, it just wants to spin. Let's see. I think a fatter one's going to be a good bet. So we're just going to find the fattest one that seems to fit the best and we're just going to use pressure. Really about the only thing I can think to do here to prevent that from stripping any further. You know, it's just unfortunate when people try to get into things with tools that aren't, you know, perfect for that. You ruin stuff and it makes it very difficult to get into it in the future. Uh, I believe that this number one Phillips really is perfect for these screws, but it's just not working for this one right now. So we're just going to go ahead and apply a bunch of force downward to try to stop that, uh, stop the head from skipping. And we're going to try to bite onto whatever we can. So we're going to do some good pressure. And it's turning. Good, 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 good. Slow and steady. We don't want to strip it anymore because it's going to be impossible to get out. Be patient. Take your time. Don't rush it. I'm just kind of waiting for that screw to loosen up because it's just into plastic and it's biting really good in there. Um, so essentially, once it starts to loosen, I can take pressure off. Like right there, it's loose. So now I can ease up the pressure and just spin it the rest of the way out and it's fine. Oh no. Um, so I wasn't being careful what I was doing with the screw there. And there it is, awesome. I was kind of worried that that might have just gone to the ninth dimension, as Northridge Fix would say. All right, so we got two more to go. I'm gonna continue with this Phillips One. I think that is the best screwdriver for this. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this up here. Keep my workspace at least a little bit uh, tidy and clean. Right now, let's get back into this here. So we've got two more screws up top here that we're going to take out. And that one's spinning real easily. And even with the uh, little effort that's taking to take some of these screws out is what also makes me, leads me to believe that this has been gotten into already. Um, everything that I've been reading about this, uh, you know, says how hard it is to get these screws out. So maybe that was just a few things that I'd read, but these are coming out very easily.
Yep, that one, hardly any pressure needed. When you screw in a plastic like that, they, they definitely have a tendency to bind in there really good. Okay, they're just turning, so they're not connected in there anymore. Um, we can try to use our magnet tool to get in there and pull those out. I would definitely like them to be out instead of in. Let's give that a try. Man, these iFixit tools are so dang convenient. I love having everything that I need at my fingertips. Nifty little magnet. Is that going to fit? No. <laughs> Just too small of a hole. That's fine. That would have been nice if we could have, um, but we'll work with what we have. All right. So now that we have all four of those screws loose, I'm just going to do a double check here and make sure there's no more screws hiding. I don't see any. So that means that we're ready to start to remove this back panel. Now to do that, what I need to do is, uh, they're recommending a screwdriver, but I think I'm going to try using the spudger by iFixit, uh, just because it's not metal and I don't want to damage things, and it's plastic. Uh, the big key thing here is that we don't want to do this. Which you, uh, This is a, kind of just a broken, I'm going to call that tab. Uh, most likely from somebody trying to, you know, pry in there or just normal use. I want to come in kind of in the strong spot here, and that's where I want to start to pry because I want to pry on a good amount of material. So let's just kind of get in there and see what starts to happen here. It's, it comes up a little bit. Good, it's working up. So I'm just going to take my time. And I'm just going to work my way around. The back here, this is very flexible right here, so I want to be careful not to let that flex too much. Uh, that's how you start breaking plastic. So we're just going to take our time working around. There we go. That is perfect. All right, I think I'm going to try to use my fingers here. Okay, yep, it's coming up now. There we go. I feel wires are ready, uh, so I want to be careful not to pull too hard here. Um, you can very easily pull out connectors or pull things off the board, and I want to be able to see the connectors. I want to see where they come from uh, so I can know where to put them back at. Fortunately, online, I'll link to a website where the, the I don't remember the name of the website, but this person has listed everything, so it's really cool. Uh, so if I do mess up, I have something to go back to. A very, very cool resource. All right, let's see what's going on here. As you can see, we've got just a bunch of wires here. Looks like uh, I got a circuit board, got a cassette player, of course, obviously. Um, and then we have a bunch of wires and an 8 ohm speaker, 0.5 watts. Cool, that's, that's going to work for me really well in my next stage. Uh, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these pieces. Uh, sorry, the connectors, because I want to take this board out. Uh, I really want to get some pictures of this board. Uh, I want to take a look at what microchips are on it, and I really want to get a good understanding of what it's doing. Uh, then that'll help me when it comes to hacking it. It's <laughs> my favorite part. So I'm going to remove those. Let's see here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of a marking system here. A little smaller marker? No. Just big rigs. Okay, that's fine. We'll make it work. Hey, that's a, actually a small. <laughs> Whoops. That's what I was looking for. Cool. Um, let's see here. I'm going to just use a bit of an alphabet here. We're going to go A, A, B, B. I see numbers on these. So it looks like a 1 and a 1. There's also a 1 on that one, so that does me no good. So I'm going to continue with my labeling. A, B, C. I and we also have to go through the alphabet fully to figure out which letter's next. <laughs> am I the only one? I am incredibly dyslexic, so that's probably why. C D G H I J K. And K. Perfect. So I have all of those labeled great. 
You okay, Hank? Are you afraid? Is this the wind, bud? You're good. Poor buddy. All right, now let's go ahead and remove those connectors. Uh, just being very careful here. Don't want to break anything. Uh, let's see. That doesn't need to be removed. It's going to the cassette player. I'm just going to start here. And these look like they're going to come off pretty easily. This is not a uh, sophisticated connector by any means. Looks like we're just going to um, be able to pull these right off. Just like that. Comes off nice and easily. Just like butter. C. And we're going to the motor drivers. D. A. H. Uh, sad looking G. F. And I'm pulling on the connectors themselves. I'm not pulling on the wires. Uh, if you pull on the wires, you stand the, the chance of, of pulling either the wire out or the wire and the metal uh, pin that's in there. So these aren't pins, these grab pins. Um, so there's a little, <laughs> blanking out what it's called, uh, but a little thing you solder the wire onto in there that grabs the pin. And you might pull that out if you pull the wires. So don't pull the wires on these. So continuing, pull out D. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have Teddy and Teddy's board. There we go. There's its circuitry. Here's the guts. Got a switch there. All the wires heading up into the head, which is where all the animatronics are. Cool. Well, for now, we can go ahead and put Teddy aside. Um, I really just want to have a look at this. This is what I want to get some detailed pictures of, because uh, this is what I need to study. All right, so we got this board out. Um, and now I'm just going to kind of strip it down just a little bit further to get some good pictures of it. Um, I found some photos online, but they weren't good enough to really see what these chips were, to be able to look up some schematics and really understand what's going on. Um, I'd like to do some customization to it, but it's really hard to do that if you don't know what's what, you know, what's supposed to be voltage, what's a signal, what's, you know, what's doing what, you know? Um, so what we're gonna do is just break this down just a little bit further so I can get some pictures. And I think this uh, number one is going to be good. Yeah, that's still good for these screws. So let's see here, it looks like we have one, two screws, three. So I have three screws here. Go ahead and remove those being careful not to let that screwdriver skip at all and strip any of these. No bueno. I'm gonna put those over here. And I haven't cleaned off my labels since my PlayStation repair. <laughs> Oops. Let's see here. I'm just gonna do top board. Put that right there. Remove screw number two. Whoop. I used to do this all the time as a kid. Uh, it's just, you okay? Hank's doing a little shake off over there. Anyways, I used to do this all the time as a kid. Just take things apart, take all the pieces apart. Um, you know, as, as a young man, as a child, I didn't fully understand what was going on, uh, but really that's, you know, how you learn is getting into things. Um, taking screws out of things, breaking things. I stripped a lot of screws. I broke a lot of connectors. Uh, I did a lot of things that a little bit of training or research would have gone a long ways. Uh, but, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't have uh, the Internet. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have this massive uh, just dump of information that is the Internet now. With the help of 
all of my prior experiences and the internet, I am hoping to be able to fix a lot more things. All right, so we have that board out of there. All those connectors were still labeled from that last step, so I didn't need to do that. And this is the bit right here that I need to get a picture of. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see here. That's a dirty phone screen. We're gross. Humans are gross. My grubby little fingers all over this thing. Use my teeth to clean that off. All right. Flip that board over. Another picture this way. Perfect. Yeah, I'm also just keeping my eye out for anything that looks abnormal because uh, I know that this supposedly is not working. Um, I really would have loved to be able to check it, but I got the wrong batteries because who uses those batteries anymore? And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it back together. Um, I don't need it to be a part this much yet. And I want to, I want to be able to test it before I go any further. Uh, so having these pictures is going to really help me to do the research I need to do to make a spooky Ruxpin. Um, but for now, we want to get it back together so we can see if it works as a normal Teddy Ruxpin. Have a cool tape coming in. Uh, the way that these work is that... Um, the animatronics is actually controlled. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in upside down. The animatronics are actually controlled uh, by the cassette tape. So the cassette. <laughs> you okay, Hank? You okay? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, the cassette tape actually controls the animatronics. Um, it, you know, normal uh, cassette tape has two channels, and they use one of the channels for the audio, and the other channel has a code in it that tells the mouth and the eyes what to do. So let's see how this goes back together. That was the pin I was kind of worried about. The solder looks good. Everything else looks fine. This plastic just looks like it bent up a little bit. That should be okay. Um, right now I'm gonna to wanna to find the connector here because that's gonna help me find the orientation and that's H. There's H right there. Very handy when you label things. It helps you out. Go and plug that back in. And then we're going to go ahead and return that to its original position, which is right there. And before I put any, any more of those on, I'm going to go ahead and put these screws in. Why do I only have three there? Oh, there's the only three on the board. Okay. That's why I label things, because I am so forgetful. <laughs> I forget everything, I lose everything, I'm disorganized. It's just, it's uh, you know, it's my lot in life. I've tried many things to not be that way, but I just am. But you know, I still managed to get a really good job that I enjoy, and I spend a lot of time fixing things. I also do IT and a bunch of other things like that, so it's a cool job. So if you're also dyslexic and terribly unorganized, there's still hope for you, don't worry. You just gotta work hard. And just because I don't want to lose these screws, I'm just going to put them in just a couple turns. Just so they stay, oh. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Oh, that sounded fantastic. Yeah, that didn't do it either. Okay, we're going to leave the screws out. It doesn't matter. We'll figure that out later. Uh, but now once I get the correct batteries, I'm going to go ahead and put those in there. 
Uh, we'll get this cleaned up a little bit too when we do that. But first, what I want to do when I get those batteries is I want to put them in. I want everything to be just as it is. And then I want to start troubleshooting from there. Uh, so we have everything back together to the point where it's functional. So we're going to call it, not a day, but we're going to call it a, a session because by the magic of YouTube, I'll have these batteries and we'll be back in action. There we go. Go ahead and cover you up. Teddy's back together. Like and subscribe.